So this is the area that we've been working on today. So we're clearing Broad Lake Privet. This morning, I just really wasn't in the best mood. This, this is my seed stash. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Over this week I thought I would pick up the camera and put together a weekly vlog for you all to show you just what I'm getting up to in the week in the garden. I've got a market this week, um, so lots of flower farming things to do and uh, lots of computer work to do for the flower farm as well. I've also got a lot of work this week um, so I thought I would just bring you along and share what I get up to. I know a lot of you enjoy these weekly vlogs and I really like creating them and kind of documenting what I'm doing in my life at different times in the year. It's really cool to look back on and uh, yeah I'm really excited for this week. I think it's going to be a good week. So for those of you who don't know me my name is Robin and I run a small flower farm here on the south coast of New South Wales, Australia. I sell local chemical free cut flowers uh, at a few different markets around. I also work as a gardener and bush regenerator with Whitbird Environmental and I also make these YouTube videos here. I also have a Patreon channel where I post a lot more personal videos over there and just extra garden vlogs so if you want to check that out I actually filmed my day yesterday of what I got up to working at the nursery uh, and just my day and just how I've been feeling lately uh, so if you want to check that out make sure to have a look over at my patreon I'll leave all the links below in the description box but for today I don't have work and this afternoon I want to spend time in the garden just doing a few jobs. I have a lot of straw flowers that I really need to get in the ground, uh, keep filling in one of the garden beds that I have. I need to move some yarrow so that I can plant the straw flower in there and we might we might just start with that for today because I, um, I need to conserve my energy for tomorrow because it's going to be a big day at work and uh, then I've got the markets later. So I will bring you along with me. If you do enjoy these videos make sure to give them a like and subscribe for lots more garden content. It really does help me out and is completely free for you. Right I need to get all of my tools and things ready to head down to the flower farm area of the garden and probably get some coffee and water and then we'll be ready to go. So this is where I grow most of the flowers on the property. A lot of these rows are filled with annual species. Also there's a lot of bowerbirds around. I'm trying to point the microphone away from them. Um, they're in their mating season right now. Which is also one reason why I don't have any blue flowers in the garden right now. Any blue cornflowers. Because the bowerbirds keep pinching them. Because if you don't know bowerbirds when they nest or when the male nests and they create their bower they take blue objects to attract females and they've been taking my blue cornflowers so 
that's something that I've learned how hard it is to grow blue corn flowers here but anyway I am down here um, behind here under this tunnel here is a lot of straw flowers planted and originally um, I was only going to do half a bed but then I had way too many so I'm doing a full eight meter bed of straw flowers now but I was kind of silly when I planted a lot of things and I actually just like I was a very happy planter and I planted things um, just randomly and so I have a massive yarrow you can see it there right in the middle of the row where I would like straw flowers so I'm going to dig that up and transplant that up to the top garden area where I'm having a lot more perennials and then I can extend this to have just all straw flowers planted down here I want a lot of straw flowers because that's what I'm using to uh, fill the Christmas baubles that I'm going to be selling closer to Christmas so I need to grow them obviously to be able to fill the baubles and I should have a lot when I have a full row and then I have a few other areas where I'll plant some more this afternoon as well. I think when I planted this, I just planted the plugs and they had multiple plants in the plug that I planted. So there are so many individual yarrow plants in here. I'm gonna need to dig it up because it's just such a massive clump. And this honestly didn't produce a lot of flowers for me. So I think it would be much better if I divided it up. Before I do that, I'm just going to snip it with some shears that are very rusty. Take care of your tools. I need to definitely give these a clean. I'm just going to trim them back and then I'll lift them up. And I'm just going to put the rest of this in the pathways as mulch. Many little yarrow plants in here. 
So behind me is the other area where I'm going to be planting a few more straw flowers. This has been my experimental no dig garden bed where I've gradually just been laying cardboard down. Um, we have kitty litter that is degradable, it's just made from recycled newspaper and paper. Uh, so that's fine to go just on the garden, it breaks down over time. And I definitely don't use it in any of the more like areas where I grow edible plants. Um, but yeah, that goes down along with sugarcane mulch, um, seaweed, leaves. Anything that kind of comes from the garden, I will just chuck in piles here rather than creating a larger compost bin. I usually just chuck garden waste on um, on the ground here and it slowly um, decomposes over time. But I have planted a few straw flowers on the fence line. It's not great soil. I'm just gonna see how they go. Um, I don't really maintain this area a lot. I've planted quite a lot of native plants that don't need attention. Um, I do have some of the native everlasting daisies planted down there as well, the golden everlasting, as well as some like leptospermum, banksias, Oh, Ficinias, billy buttons, and what else have I got? Lots of leptospermums down here. Um, it's slowly taking shape and I think it's going to be a beautiful garden. But in the meantime, when a lot of the larger plants are really small, I'm going to be planting smaller plants like short-lived perennials and annuals. I kind of treat all of the uh, straw flowers like an annual. So I'm going to be planting some of those in here uh, as well as like any other leftover flowers that I have, but predominantly just need to get these straw flowers in the ground so going to go get my mattock because it's a little hard to dig in there dig a few holes and I'm going to just add some potting mix in to give the plants a little bit of nutrients and then I will get the rest of the straw flowers in the ground it's also really hot today like I'm actually struggling out here I uh, don't know if you can tell but I am very flushed and um, yeah if this is anything what summer is gonna be like it's gonna be really hot and dry because this is still winter and I am like sweating and really hot so yeah fun times ahead I need to go and get some more water before I start planting these
good morning. I look like, well, like I have just woken up because I kind of have. Uh, it's 6.30 and I am heading off to work. It takes me about 50 minutes, an hour to get to where I'm going and I haven't been to the site where I'm working at today before. So I want to get there nice and early and make sure I actually know where I'm going. So I'll take you along for what we're doing today. I think we're drilling a lot of privets and lots of other weeds, so it should be fun. So this is the area that we've been working on today. So we're clearing broad leaf privet, which is all of this on the ground here. It's basically a forest of privet on this property. Um, so we've been cutting a lot of the smaller trees and trying not to fall over. <laughs> uh, so you can see all these little red dots down here. That's where we have been cutting some of them then painting them with uh, a poison. Some of the bigger ones we've been drilling. So you kind of drill like a line a few dots around the base of the plant and this actually then uptakes the poison and it slowly dies so the aim of this is to really just replace a lot of these invasive species with native species that will gradually come up and uh, establish themselves so we've already got a lot of um, like local ferns some really pretty ones uh, and other spiky species and orange thorn which is one of my favorites it's very spiky but small little birds love this and we're hoping that yeah this kind of changes over time it's such a beautiful property we're kind of up on one of the mountains it's actually starting to rain right now but I'll um I'll take you over here and show you the morning tea spot I've also been clearing a bit of lantana over here but you can see the gorgeous view here it's absolutely stunning really beautiful property Good morning. It is now Thursday and I have a few hours to harvest and put together a few little um, germ jar posies for the market. I'm still not at the point where I can do wrapped bunches yet, but the plan is to see if I can do some status, which is going to be like a fresh to dry bunch. Might see if I can pick some of those. I have like a few little lonely snapdragons that I can pick and I also have all of the anemones so I'm going to go and pick those, pick some greens, pick some filler, see what I can put together. So I thought I would just do a little relaxing montage of me picking some flowers. Scott is going to help me film. So enjoy these next few shots of some of the flowers and then I'll show you me putting them all together and what they look like for the market today.
All right, I have finished putting everything together here. I now have like this little workbench downstairs next to my desk here. So it's just a little bit more manageable to get work done and put all the posies and flowers together. I kind of struggled this time to put together the posies. So I've got anemones obviously in flower as you saw. So I put together just some little posies and to be honest, like I really don't love making posies, I'm just gonna say it. I much prefer to work with wrapped bunches and be able to just create like bigger arrangements. Um, you're kind of limited with uh, the jam jar posies where you really need to pick the colors um, that go together. Like this one turned out really well, nice purple and white, but when you've got bright colors like the reds and like the really bright pinks, it's kind of a little difficult to put an arrangement together. So while I was putting everything together, I this morning, I just really wasn't in the best mood. I was grumpy and cranky and I just was getting frustrated at the fact that I just couldn't put together things that looked nice. It took me quite a while to do just those four jam jar posies and it was just a little frustrating. So. So I kind of thought about why am I frustrated and it's just because I don't have a lot of experience working with anemone flowers. I don't know, um, just, I just don't, I just don't know what they go with. So it's just really trial and error and that's kind of why I was frustrated. So I didn't really film a lot of me putting them together because I was just kind of having a rant to Scott and um, just a lot of other things going on in life. I just feel like um, I needed a little bit of a rant so anyway keeping it real um i need to go and get ready because i obviously just like i i just need to put myself together a little bit more um so the market goes from two o'clock to six o'clock but i'll probably only stay there for a few hours because i kind of have an agreement with jeff from whitbird environmental i do some markets and he does other markets and also I um, I'm just I'm just really tired so <laughs> I'm gonna go and set up there and then um, stay for a little bit see how it goes I ended up putting together a good amount of things for like this time of the year I put together 10 mini dried arrangements which are these little ones uh, these always do really well I sell these for five dollars these are just leftover stems or stems that I've dried of status and lavender um, so I do some lavender and some status and they sell really well. They look really cute and they're such a nice little gift for people or just something to brighten up like your bedroom or the bathroom or one room in your house. I really like these. So I made 10 of those and then I made two $15 fresh to dry arrangements, which is all of these status. So that's this bunch here. So these are fresh at the moment and they can be hung up and dried so that they keep their color. I also have quite a few plants that I'm bringing. I'm bringing some uh, leftover flower seedlings that I have, uh, like some yarrow, larkspur, and uh, lavender. So that'll help to fill out my side of the stall as well as all of the bath salts. So I think we're good for the market this week. I'm just really holding out for those ranunculus. Like when I get those, I am gonna be so, so happy. But I think it should be a good market. It's a really beautiful day. So uh, we'll see how we go. I'm gonna go put myself together and um, have a little cuddle with Annie because she's just been so cute. She loves kind of just like being around me whenever I'm working down here. So I'm gonna do that and then grab some food and head off. I have just finished at the markets. So There's still about an hour and a half left, but uh, Jeff is gonna stay and look after the stall. Um, 
overall pretty slow. <laughs> I think I'd made like $77 when I left. So that's not taking off the stall fee or anything like that. So hopefully a few more things sell. The fresh to dry bunches sold though, which was good. Um, I thought they would do pretty well, but I'm really hot. So I had to go grab a drink. It definitely does not feel like a um, winter's day. I've been really into um, kombucha lately or any kind of fermented drink. These ones currently, the guava flavor, amazing. Kind of just been a little obsessed with it. So yeah, I'm going to head home. I think Scott needs the car because he wants to go to the gym. So I'm gonna head home and probably relax for the rest of the afternoon because I'm so tired. <laughs> It was a really nice market though. I don't know if you can hear in the background, there's two guys that were playing some music, um, some guitar and the drums and it was a really good vibe. So really nice people that we said hi to. And uh, yeah, overall really like good vibes at this market, but poor traffic was very slow. So that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna head home and um, rest because tomorrow is gonna be a big working day. Uh, we're doing some more bush regeneration at this beautiful property, so I'll definitely take you along uh, and show you what we get up to. But for now, I'm going to go home, back to my cats, back to Scott, and uh, have a relaxing afternoon. So today's job is clearing more lantana. We've just been clearing some little bits around the sides of this creek here. The plan is to kind of walk up the creek, which this is an amazing, beautiful site, and clear a little bit more lantana. Crease of the curtains and the pillows were annoying me. Good morning. It is now Saturday morning and I have had the most relaxing, divine morning. Being all cozy, 
having some porridge, drinking some coffee while it was lightly raining. It's kind of stopped now, but this rain has been so beautiful this morning because we haven't really had rain in weeks, really, like proper rain. And to be honest, I was getting a little bit worried about the garden and what I was going to do with um, all of my flower farm rows that I don't have irrigation right now. So, so I'm glad we've got the rain. The soil is nice and moist now, so I don't have to worry about watering for another few days. That's a problem for another day. Um, but as you can see here, let me hold them up. This, this is my seed stash. <laughs> I have a problem, I'm not gonna lie, like I do, I definitely do, I have, I have a big problem. Um, and a few people have been asking me to show my seed stash and my seed organizing and how I organize seeds. And this, this is previously what I've, what I've been doing. I am, I'm not the most organized person, I'm, yeah, let's just say that, I'm really not. I find it difficult, I, I like to keep everything clean, like I'm not, unclean in terms of my spaces but I'm definitely not the most organized so I have really made an effort this year to try and step that up and I've seen so many people get these from Kmart which are just what are they photo and craft storage boxes and now I'm that person too I've gone and done it it really wasn't they weren't that expensive and I think these are really going to help me out because what I seem to do is I seem to order do a nice little order of seeds. Um, I choose a few out of that envelope that arrives and plant them straight away if they need to be planted at that time. Uh, and then I will just stick the envelope away. I'll put it away somewhere. And then I'll eventually kind of, you know, get a little pile of seeds or whatever. And then I'll just find like a box, like a shoe box and um, stick them in that. And I've obviously done that like one, two, three, four, five times. To the point where I now have just a tower of random boxes and I honestly don't really know what's in them. The only one that's kind of organized is this little storage box, which has hardly nothing in it. <laughs> so I can use this as well. Um, this has some flowers in there that I I attempted, but I think, I think color is going to work a little bit better for my brain. So we're going to organize them in that. And yeah, part of this, you know, I do get sent some seeds and I do work with um, like Whitburn Environmental to kind of like promote Jeff's seeds and I also just enjoy planting those seeds um, but there are a lot of other ones a lot of seeds that I've like saved myself um, that I've been given we're gonna we're gonna organize it um, I'm, I don't have any like labels right now all I'm gonna focus on is just getting them into their own little box so that they can have a little home um, with the other you know kind of seeds and we'll go from there so there's just all of these little boxes and I'm going to sort through this. I'm on, the, I'm on the floor, so I've got some space to do what I need to do. And um, I will show you the final product of organizing seeds. And then I'm actually going to pick some out because I am going to be sowing some veggies either later today or tomorrow. But I really need to sort out what I want to grow in terms of food for the next few months. All right, so I'm pretty happy that I got all of these organized. This is just all of like my veggies and greens and herbs. Uh, I didn't get around to all of the flowers. I still have one shoe box and one little box of flower seeds because I am just going to buy another one. Uh, but I did kind of mainly want to organize all of um, the veggies and tomatoes and greens and things like that because I just want to know what I do and don't need to buy because I want to put some seed orders in soon. So I'll go through the categories of what I ended up putting together. Firstly, I just have one of some lettuce. I have um, greens like kale and spinach. I have one for like random native seeds and seeds that um, I've kind of just like collected from around the garden uh, of some native plants. I have herbs. I've got one for peas and beans, root crops, tomatoes, 
chilies and capsicums. I ended up putting just like a brassica one together because um, because this is generally like the cooler season crops. So I wanted all of these together. Uh, I've got, uh, I think this is, yeah, this is zucchini and cucumber, pumpkins and watermelon, and one for onions and shallots and chives. I do also have these two bags. Uh, this one is full of um, seeds, again, that I've collected and like larger seed packets. Like I've got uh, some salt bush in here, lots of calendula seeds, pigeon pea, and then another random bag because I just didn't have enough of these. But this has got like corn and rosella seed that I've collected and uh, some okra as well. I did a bit of a rummage through and picked out a few seeds that I want to go and plant now. I have these little planter boxes that I'm going to plant up and have them on the balcony upstairs. I've wanted to do this for so long and today's the day. I'm definitely going to do it. Um, I'd just like some greens and some shallots upstairs that uh, is just really accessible that I don't have to walk downstairs out into the garden. I can just have these on our little uh, balcony out from the little reading room that we have. And I think in one of those containers, I'm just going to plant it all with shallots. So I've got this one here, which is the white Lisbon. Um, I've got some extra like seeds of that here. I have a lot um, and some of the seeds may be expired. So I'm just going to mix them all together and plant them fairly densely. Um, it's a great time to get your onions and shallots in the ground right now. Uh, they don't mind a little bit of cooler weather to germinate, but if you're getting um, like frost, I would probably recommend like covering them with either like a plastic tub to germinate them or germinate them in like a greenhouse. But mine should be fine germinating on the balcony, it gets really great sun there. Uh, and if they don't, I'll just put a little bit of plastic over them to increase the soil temperature. If you do want a discount on some seeds, definitely make sure to check out the description box because there's always a discount code for some seed packets down there. Um, and I'm also going to be sowing some English spinach and maybe some French breakfast radishes in the other one. So I'll probably do these two together uh, and then a whole thing of shallots. I actually quite enjoyed that little organization part of my morning. It was nice just to sit, catch up on a few YouTube videos. I've been really loving Megan Hughes's vlogs. I have watched all of her moving vlogs and then I was just like re-watching um, other vlogs that she posted like months ago because I just love her content. She's hilarious and very relatable. So love watching her. And I was also watching You Can't Eat the Grass. They are probably one of my favorite YouTube channels. Really great flower farming uh, information, particularly on their lives. I always listen to them as like a podcast in the car and yeah, I find them really enjoyable. Wow, what a delight. What's this? It's for your tea bag. Oh. <laughs> no food, sorry. Wow. Thank you. No worries. Thanks. And who else have I been watching? I've been watching a lot of Simple Living Alaska. Really love them. Uh, yeah, let me know if you want me to uh, do like a list of YouTube channels that I watch at the moment because yeah, I've been I've been listening and watching a lot more YouTube lately. And um, yeah, there's just lots of good content out there right now. All right, it has just started raining, even though the sun is out, but there's just like clouds coming and going. So I'm gonna wait for the rain to stop and then I'm gonna plant these and wrap this vlog up. It was definitely a little bit of a uh, chaotic random vlog. But that's just what my week was like this week. Uh, very random and chaotic and lots of work and markets. Um, I did sell a few more things after I left the markets as well. So I think it was another like 20, $25 extra. I probably would have made around something like $90, maybe a little bit less. And then I've got to take off the stall fee as well. Um, so yeah, another slow market, but I'll chat in a future vlog of what my plans are for the markets because I'm thinking of changing things up a bit and maybe trying some new markets and also bringing in some new products that I am in the process of making over there. But I'm going to finish this vlog by planting these seeds. I'll put some nice relaxing music over the top of that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for making it to the end if you did. 
I really, really appreciate you watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for lots more gardening and flower farming content. I hope this uh, vlog kept you company if you needed a little bit of company in your week. And I look forward to making another weekly vlog very soon. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. And until my next one, happy gardening, everyone. Bye.